Welcome, everybody. I am enjoying the pre-show chat with none other than Kristen Booth. Oh my God, I am I'm the luckiest uh, postable in the world because this week has been fantastic. I got a chance to speak to Crystal. Now I get a chance to speak to Kristen. This is amazing. Well, I'm happy to be here, Alan. No, it's 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 wonderful, and I love your backyard. It's so pretty. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, it's nice. It's nice to have. It, it was uh, our saving grace during the, the lockdowns, that's for sure. Yeah, and now that uh, the lockdown may be coming in again, uh, you have some place to uh, to go. Yeah. Yes, yes, for sure. Uh, a few more orders of, of business. Uh, it's, uh, it's a little bit past your birthday, but from uh, myself and all the postables, happy, happy belated birthday to you. Thank you so much. I, I was very spoiled by the postables. I received a box full of cards and notes and letters and gifts, and it's just overwhelming. And uh, I haven't been able to even scratch the surface of getting through them, but I enjoy each and every one of them. And, and thank you so much, postables. Yeah, they, they love you. Uh, when I posted on our Facebook group, hello, Facebook group, when I posted on the Facebook group and I said that you're coming on, uh, I, I stopped counting how many uh, <laughs> dozens of comments and questions. I wrote, just so you guys know, I wrote some of them down, okay? But I'm, I, I'm, I don't have uh, uh, Kristen for you know two and a half hours to ask all of them, so we'll we'll make <laughs> we'll make do. But uh, you are done shooting eleven. I know you're probably not allowed to say much, but what is it that you're allowed to share with the community? Well, it, it's funny because the the announcement of the film has already kind of given away a little bit of the of the yeah. plot points, um, the major ones anyway. Uh, so it, it's already out there that um, Shane and Oliver are planning their wedding. Uh, it's uh, it's um, now knowledge that Shane's mother is introduced in SSD eleven, um, <laughs> which you know, which is which was very exciting for me. Um, you know, both both as an actor to to welcome in a new a new performer and and work with someone new and and create a, a relationship and I a dynamic that way but also you know it's so exciting for the character to to be able to um reveal a little bit of her background and her you know where she came from and and why she might be the way she is um and and, and i think uh, the woman who played my mom was fantastic uh, we got along quite well and enjoyed uh, working with each other. So I think I'm I'm really hoping, and I I, I really would be surprised if the postables don't um, really love the dynamic between Shane and her mom. It's it's quite realistic, <laughs> um, fraught with uh, the tensions that most mothers and daughters have, but also um, a lot of love and and respect is there too so it was a, a a great joy to uh finally meet shane's mom because and this is this is amazing I, I wasn't thinking about that because there have been questions of is your sister going not your shane excuse me is the uh, yes, no. to be introduced because you know we did touch upon there was that communication uh that's an awesome cop i want to ask you about that um paris is always a good idea by the way, bonus points, anybody in the comments before we name that movie. Which movie did that come from? Paris is always a good idea. We'll uh, we'll we'll come back to that in just a few minutes. But so the question is, you know, was Shane's sister introduced in Eleven? Uh, and now we know about the mother. So are you allowed to say anything about the sister? Okay. <laughs> Moving right along. Got it. And then my question is, all right, so Shane's mother has been introduced. Is Shane's mother single by any chance? Because we know Oliver's father is single. So who? <laughs> that would be kind of weird, Alan. <laughs> it's, it's Hallmark. Okay. It's, not un, it's not unheard of. It's not unheard of. Um, Shane's mom is single. Um and uh, she and Joe have some uh, some great scenes together. Um, yeah. That's all I'll say about that. 
Okay. <laughs> I will stop asking because I want to know everything, but I don't want to know because I just want to. <laughs> yeah, perfect. Thank you. Uh, how was getting, um, you know, the proverbial getting back in the saddle? How was seeing the family after a couple of years uh, of not going? Oh, it was surreal, really. Um, that first table read uh, it was magical, really. Oh, I sounded like Drew Barrymore. It's so magical. Um, <laughs> Uh, it really was, though. I mean, when you think about how much time has passed and and what has happened in the time that has passed, it's been it's been really um, un, uh, epic uh, and unheard of. Um, so to be gathered again with that family and those people after living through the global pandemic and and all of the other political um strife and 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 controversy and everything i mean it's just it's been such a heavy few years um in this world of uh, with all the conflict and and um the virus and everything that, that this was just such a welcome breath of fresh air and 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 a ray of sunlight um it was a joyous occasion to sit around that table and look at these people, um, talk with them, sh and 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 read Martha's amazing script. Um, it was a gift. It was a true gift, and uh, I I'm so grateful for the last month and a, and a bit uh, that I got to spend in Vancouver with my Science Seal delivered family. Yeah, did the tradition of crying during uh, read. <laughs> You know, yes, one hundred percent. However, our our dear Jojo, who is Martha's assistant for so many years, um, she's moved on to other things in her life. Uh, I believe she went back to school, so there were no Kleenexes. So I had to like use my arm and my dress um, and pieces of the script. <laughs> <laughs> to wipe up my tears because uh yeah jo jojo always knew she always had multiple boxes of kleenex on the table and and uh martha's new assistant james amazing young man and very sweet but just didn't have the forethought or the for you know the knowledge to put multiple boxes of kleenex on the table but yeah. there were tears many of them listen where's where's oliver's handkerchief when you need it right <laughs> Well, yeah, Oliver wasn't really there yet. He, his wardrobe wasn't there. It was Eric, and Eric doesn't carry, you know, handkerchiefs around with him. Eric, if you're watching, please make sure that for 12, you know, <laughs> God willing, you get 12, for 12, you, uh, you bring a handkerchief. Just <laughs> Okay, that's, that's awesome. And I know, um, you know, I talked to Crystal, um, obviously, on Monday. And she said that you guys are, are sisters and, uh, and best friends. Did do you get to see each other? I know you're not necessarily living uh, uh, anywhere close to each other, but do you get to see each other? Did you see, you know, uh, between 10 and 11? Um, yes. So uh, Crystal and I, um, we talk pretty much weekly. We FaceTime uh, quite a bit. Um, and then we were really, really lucky enough. Right before the pandemic, we shot a movie together in Los Angeles called The Wrong Wedding Planner. Yeah. Um, and uh, it was this really, really low budget film for Lifetime, uh, a thriller. I got to play a psychopath who was stalking her fiance. Um, and uh, it was such a great time. Um, we really, truly had some of the best time of our lives doing that movie it was so cheesy but so fun um and i even i even lived with her for half the shoot in her uh house so we are we are i don't know that you can get much closer than um than crystal and i yeah she mentioned uh, that her daughter uh you know refers to you as ann boothie and she thinks Auntie of, boothie, yeah. Auntie boothie, and she thinks of you as a store uh <laughs> yes uh, well yeah i'll let me elaborate on that um i have a daughter who's a few years older than crystal's daughter and so i 
hand all of my daughter's clothing down to Mila, uh, Crystal's daughter. And so, yeah, she thinks Auntie Boothie is a store and um, she may be right. <laughs> I, I'm just thinking that you know, not that you have nothing else to uh, to do, but it's it's a pretty good store name. I, I think it could be something. You know, create a little brand <laughs> of uh, kids' clothing. Yeah, actually, you know, if I had any spare time, that would be a good idea. <laughs> so uh, back to uh, back to the movie that you were just uh, referring to that you shot with yes. the play the psychopath. I know you're you're a big fan of uh, horror, and we'll come back to into that cup in a second. Uh, I know you're a big fan of horror and you love watching horror movies. You've been obviously in that genre as an actress, but where does that love of horror come from? Uh, what, what started it for you? I, uh, I, I, there's Griffin. He wants to be part of the interview. He was sleeping soundly on my lap, but now of course he's, he's making noise. Um, I, you know, it's funny. I actually, I'm not sure where my love of watching horror films came from. Um, I would guess that that adrenaline rush is a big part of it. I really love to be scared um, when I set out to be scared. Um, so, you know, there's I, I'm one of those people that will sit in the theater and scream things out at the screen. I'm sure people are like, oh, God, it's one of those. Um, but I, I just get so wrapped up and involved in in the story. and and. Um, I, I, I just, I sit there just waiting to be, you know, um, terrified and, and uh, shocked. So it's funny, uh, my other best friend and I used to watch horror films together constantly. Um, that was our, that was our thing. Uh, and uh, it's such a fun genre. I mean, it, it's, it's, it's fantastical, it's, but yet it has, you know, a foot in realism and, uh it's just fun it's just a lot of fun to to watch uh and be uh be scared and i love jumping out of my seat <laughs> so knowing that and i know that uh you know the rest of the cast probably knows that about you anybody try to do anything on set where they jump out when uh, you're least expecting to scare you <laughs> Not on Science Field Delivered, but I will say uh, I did a feature, an indie indie feature, right before uh, end of mid end of 2019, uh, called Marlene. Um, mm. And on that set, they got me good. They, uh, I think, I even posted a picture of me um, shocked and and screaming with my mouth wide open because the one particular crew member was hell bent on, on terrifying me and she, and she succeeded. So, um, yeah, no, there, the definitely people enjoy my, um, <laughs> very animated <laughs> reactions to being terrified. This, this really sounds like a Crystal and Jeff thing to do. So <laughs> you're watching this, you know, pick, pick an appropriate time and then see what happens. <laughs> Sorry, Kristen. Um, to uh, to your cup, uh, Paris is always a good idea. Which movie is that from? It's one of my favorite movies of all time. You tell me. It's from Sabrina. It's from yes. Sabrina, uh, the second version, or with... the the you know uh, not with uh, Audrey Hepburn, but uh, with uh, Harrison Ford. And what who is the actress? I can't remember. Isn't it um wasn't she in um Legends of the Fall as well? Yes. What is her name? It's on no. the tip of my tongue. Uh it's it's a it's a uh, French sounding name. Julia Armand? Julia Armand. Julia Armand. And that's is why that I Harrison Ford. Is that I didn't it? remember her name. Yes, it is Julia Armand. Uh she's she's so lovely and a and a wonderful yes. actress. And uh, Paris is always a good idea. That's a line from that movie. So um, love, love, love that movie. As a matter of fact, I watched the original, and you know Audrey Hepburn, she's she's amazing. But I actually didn't like the original. I love. Oh, interesting. I did not like the original. There are some some parts of the original that are just that don't speak to me, and and that are, that are not truthful uh, in in certain moments. Whereas this one is just it's a it's a magical. Magical ride. I really, really, really. 
Well, that's, I'm going to have to go back and watch them both because it's been years since I've seen them. Uh, Sabrina is always a good idea. Uh, yeah. And then, and then speaking of cups, I know, I know you've seen this one, right? That I, I have, which is amazing. So there is a story with your design because your design I had a lot more trouble with. Because <laughs> you know, with, with Crystal, low, it has owl, we're, we're good, right? So once, once I was able to pinpoint that, that becomes an easy thing to do. It's just a matter of which design we go with. With yours, you have Shane McInerney, and then you have Kristen Booth, and then you have nothing that ties into it. And <laughs> I, I have so many different design ideas. Uh, you know, the first one that I came up with was just for Shane McInerney because SM to me is small miracles, and it ties. Oh, I like that. I like it too, but I'm like, I need to tie Kristen in here. That, that, that doesn't fit. That that puzzle wasn't wasn't there. So I didn't go with that design. Then I went with this design. I'll show it to you. Uh, I the cup of this design is arriving to me with to is arriving tomorrow. So of course not in time for our interview, but uh, it it'll be here. So the design was well. I need to tie Oliver Shane. How do I do this? Postables. Oh, I get it. <laughs> that's amazing that's thank amazing you. thank you so uh there is all i never i never would have put that together but that is quite amazing thank you uh so <laughs> this design i was going to say that it's for you and i was sharing it with uh with um with one person uh from postable on, on Facebook, I'm not gonna you know, tell her name just not to make her embarrassed. But I was sharing it with her, and she loved the design. And she's like, "No, no, it's it's not Kristen. It has to be a Kristen thing." And I said, "You know what? It'll come to me." And then, in a perfect postables way, uh, my wife is also a huge fan, and she's re-watching re things right now. So two days ago, and I mean this literally, two days ago, I walk into our our master suite. Uh, where I want to brush my teeth and my wife is watching the ground and she's watching higher ground and it's the scene where Shane and Oliver go into the jazz club and uh, Oliver you know keeps uh, mispronouncing kombucha kombucha um, yes and uh, Shane tells Oliver about how much he loves kombucha. and I am somewhat listening and then I get it because Kristen Booth is Oh my gosh, that's hilarious. I love it. <laughs> so this is your design. This is what you're getting on, on your mug so you can uh, you can drink it and I'll send it to you. This oh my goodness, I love it. Yeah, so kombucha blues. And I love the sound of that. To me, it just sounds awesome. I don't know what it is. It just, it sounds really good, Kombucha Blues, and it incorporates your initials. So it came to me in a postables way. Angels, thank you. It it came. Wow. Well. well, it's a perfect gift for me because I love my coffee and uh, I, will, I will use that mug on the daily. So thank you, Alan. Thank you. It's It's my pleasure and I appreciate uh, you know, the, the assignment and uh, the thought process because it just gave me another reason to love the uh, to love the show. It, it worked in a perfect manner. Anyway, so I'll get I'll get that one to you. Um, Thank you. Some, some of the postables questions that I, I have to ask you. So, yes. Um, and this this one kind of goes into what uh, what Crystal was saying as well as because her daughter is looking at her on screen and then she sees uh, her kissing another man who is not her father. She's like, mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. and they have to have that conversation. Your daughter is a bit older, but uh, you know, there is plenty of yeah. uh, with Shane and Oliver. Did you have any of those discussions with her of saying it's acting, it's not real, not daddy? You know, it's funny. Um, my daughter has this thing about kissing. Um, does not like it. So, you know, um, my husband and I kiss each other goodnight every night and she's there um, 
and she's always like, oh, God, kissing. Um, and just like, she'll make any sort of comment, ew, or stop it, or why do you have to do that? Um, so the idea of her mother kissing someone who's not um, her father is, is a whole other realm of disgusting in her mind. Um, and actually, she, we were on the phone one day, and I was on set. And uh, I got a break uh, while they were setting up for another shot. And I called her because I'm, you know, try to talk to her every day um, when I'm not with her. And she said, hey, mom, do you have to kiss anybody today? <laughs> and I and I said, actually, I do. Uh, she was like, that's just gross. You know, if I were an actor and they offered me a role where I had to kiss, her, I'd say, uh, no, thank you. You can keep it. <laughs> you know, let's wait a few minutes. Let's wait a few. So she's she's not she's not you know not a fan of kissing and not a fan of of uh, her mother kissing uh, anyone. <laughs> so yeah, it, she doesn't she doesn't watch the show. She doesn't uh, so I don't have to worry about it too much. But um, I'm sure one day she'll she'll stumble across it. Yeah. Uh, how about uh, your husband? I Hide her eyes. <laughs> uh, how about your husband? I know he's a, he's a writer, he's a director. Um, how I, he's in the industry, so uh, so technically it's easier. My wife is outside the industry, so fortunately I haven't had to have those conversations with her because I've never been hired for a role that required it. But um, <laughs> how conversations with your husband? Um. You know, he, he doesn't, he doesn't love it. <laughs> That's for sure. Uh, but I, I, you know, I think he understands um, that it's sort of part of my, my job description with certain roles. Uh, and um, he knows that my heart only belongs to him. So he's, he's cool. He's a pretty secure guy. So, so he's, he's more of a fan of you playing a psychopath or any of the other <laughs> outside of the romantic yeah definitely okay that, that works well um okay so when when i started watching uh science and delivery and um you know i saw that it was a series before for the first season then it kind of got canceled uh which thankfully i didn't have to live through because i just went on and continued watching the movie so i i came to it later um but it actually made a ton more sense to me for it to be continued as independent films that are building one on top of another because the series was progressing too quickly. Not in a bad way, but it was progressing too quickly where in season two, you would have already had to have more things happen and Rita and Norman uh, would have had to take the relationship to the next level. There were many things that had it been a series, there's not a lot of runway. So for me, as I was watching the episodes, I actually made a mental note saying, hey, I think this would have been better as independent standalone films. So when that decision was made, I know as an actor, kind of, you know, shocking, you're on a series that doesn't get uh, continued, but did any of you think, hey, this probably works better in a different way? Um, yeah, I mean, I think, I think Martha's, writing deserves and and um necessitates the the two hour format um it allows the story to breathe more it doesn't have to you know necessarily um wrap up in a in a in a quickened uh, way as with the the episodic stuff um I think it's better for her um, to have the extra time to explore more about the characters and and the letters or packages and how those are affecting um, our our four heroes. So I, I I you know yes there was there was initial shock with the um, decision not to continue with the one hour episodes, but um, ultimately in the end I was I was grateful and and i felt that was the right decision yeah i completely agree and i'm thankful it's uh, it's gone that way and hopefully <clears throat> 11 does 
uh, amazingly, and then Hallmark uh, will just say, you know what, let's just continue with this. We, we can do it for a lot longer. Um, yeah, any, well, uh, we'll see. <laughs> information that, uh, that you're privy to uh, about? Uh, no, I, honestly, I, I, I'm as in the dark as everyone else is. I have no, I had no idea <clears throat> what Hallmark's plans are for this, for the series of films. Um, I know Hallmark has undergone a lot of changes in the last year and a half. Uh, so, you know, I think they're trying to figure out what, you know, what they want um, to, you know, in, in continuing on with the network and, and how they want to um, shape that. So I don't know how SSD fits into that. Hopefully it does. But, um, as, you know, as I said, I think we all felt just so grateful for getting that last, the one we just did that um, obviously more would be a massive bonus and, and incredible, but uh, we, um, you know, we're just really, really uh, happy that we got to do 11 hmm. and it was um, a long time coming. So it was, and uh, you know, we'll do yeah. all what we can to influence anything that we can, you know, with our viewership and uh, and social media campaigns and letter writing and everything else. Um, yeah, I mean, that's the thing, right? Uh, um, be, more than anything, numbers talk. So, yeah. so viewership is is huge, and if and if the this SSD eleven gets really big numbers and viewership then you know i would i would think it would be pretty hard for the network to be like yeah we're not going to do any more of those so you know it's all it's it in the end it's a business so you know numbers talk yeah and i just think it fits so nicely into what hallmark is trying to do uh it has diversity it has very interesting uh different kind of stories it has a wonderful fan base, which uh, would absolutely love it and support it. And it is really needed, especially right now, uh, you know, with with COVID, uh, with what's happening in the I world, clarity, uh, with the uh, political divide. Uh, it was my place to go and rekindle myself and rekindle the the love that I have with humanity and ability to just slow down and breathe and i think that's yeah. even more needed right now than anywhere anytime else i agree and i i you know i've received so many messages um from fans and people who've seen the show and and that is the continuing theme in all of those messages is that this show has been a lifeline or a ray of light or you know supportive in in ways that people couldn't even have predicted and um i've had people tell me the show has changed their life has mm -hmm. um re repaired relationships and uh you know renewed people's faith in humanity um and you know one thing that i think we're all very proud of about seinfeld delivered is it's it's the element of inclusivity um the show has incorporated so many different storylines and people of all backgrounds um and uh there's no it's done in such a way that that, that it, it's just so organic to martha's writing um she just she herself is someone who is without bigotry um you know, without judgment. And um, I think it reflects in her writing. And I think now more than ever, we need more shows that that are an example of that. Yeah, it's, it's incredible what we're seeing because <clears throat> at least 10 of those comments of what to ask you were, please tell her how much it means to us to have the show and what effect it had on our lives. Uh, reading yeah. the comments, uh, some people were commenting to Crystal that, hey, my my husband has Alzheimer's, and uh, the way for me to not to spiral is to watch Science Seal Deliver. There are people who go to the hospitals, and uh, one woman was spending a month in a hospital, and she literally told her hospital, hey, if you don't have Science Seal Delivered, I'm changing hospital. Uh, I'm <laughs> 
I'm going elsewhere. And they went all around. That's great. Had her access to it. So it's it's enormous effect on people's lives, and uh, it it is really needed. And by the way, I as as you were talking and you were saying inclusivity, I was thinking you know kind of uh, tongue in cheek to myself because I'm uh, I'm Russian speaking. Uh, I was thinking that hey, you haven't had a Russian character on Hallmark. I am happy to find it. But, uh, <laughs> but how about an international letter that that has to be uh, you know delivered. Uh, uh, somewhere and you need a Russian speaking. I am right here. So uh, it's it's another story. Like Amazing. That. Well, you know, it's funny that you brought up the international element because Hallmark has really branched out in the last couple of years of doing international stories. I mean, they've gone to Australia, they've gone to Africa. Um, I, I think what better show um, than Sign Sealed Delivered to branch out into an international sort of storyline and and go go international and the postables have the the means and and the wares to do that so i i feel like it's such a huge opportunity that um would really be a shame to to let pass by if hallmark didn't um didn't uh, catch on to that I agree so hallmark i hope somebody is watching and somebody is listening and postables please you know send, <laughs> send this out to them and Paris is always Paris is always a good idea. Yes, uh, we we can have you know well in Paris. Why not? I think that'll work. Exactly. Um, dealing just as with, long as we don't see Holly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, wonderful actress, uh, but you know I don't know if she was received well well by the folks. <laughs> I need to look through it. I can say from my from my perspective as a character, not the actress, not the person playing her, but as a character, just it, it didn't work for me. I did not uh, I did not like it. It, it was not uh, something that I resonated with. And I'm happy that that storyline ended. And you know, it was a way. But you know, but we needed her. We needed her. Uh, she served her purpose, and uh, ultimately brought Shane and Oliver closer together and and then we were like bye bye. <laughs> Thank you for um how yeah. did playing Shane change you as a person? Oh wow. Um that's a very good question. Okay. Whew. Um gosh, I don't even know where to begin. Uh, because playing Shane has truly changed my life um, in so many, so many, so many small and huge ways. Um, I mean, I, first of all, the reception um, from the fans of the show the love and support and constant um, encouragement that I receive from the postables is truly unlike anything I ever anticipated or could have imagined. Um, it is a true gift. Um, and there are times, there are certainly times where I feel um sort of you know tired um or or despondent or uh wondering if i'm you know if what i'm doing in my life matters um all those kind of existential questions that we as human beings ask ourselves up from time to time and um you know i I continuously go back to some of the letters I, and notes I've received. Um, and it, it just reassures me that, um, you know, that what I, that what I'm doing, it does matter. Um, it does affect people in a positive way. Um, and so that, that's been huge. And then just the relationships that, I have made through Sign Field Delivered. My friendship with Crystal is, 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 I mean, 
we've just been through so much together um, over the years, and it's rare in the entertainment industry, and, and maybe not as much as it used to be. Um, I, I'm happy to say, but for for women to support women um, in a way that you know lifts lifts us up. Um, there's a there's a great um, I, I'm going to butcher it, but there's a great little saying about um, fixing another woman's crown, um, you know, and, and Crystal is the, she is that for me, like she fixes my crown um, and she, she supports me and she um, never once did I feel um, that there was any sense of um, rivalry or competition or we just love each other and want the best for each other and so we constantly are there um to fix that crown uh and then and then that also is is the case with martha as well um the the female relationships in from sign sealed delivered uh are are the the diamonds that that i carry um from my experience i, I Martha has been an incredible mentor and friend and and um, influence in my life. Uh, and you know, I also I don't talk about this very often, um, but I am not I am not a religious person. Um, I have a very strong sense of spirituality, um, but I am not someone who's ever sort of subs to organized religion uh, and I have to admit when I first got the job Martha's faith scared me um, I wasn't sure what I was getting into um, and uh, she has continued to amaze me with her openness her um, acceptance her her views on things her advice her her love um, and and I and I've come to realize that um, we can uh, promote faith and love and hope, and it doesn't have to be affiliated with a religion. It doesn't have to be um, about that. And and that has been an incredible learning experience for me, and has really opened my heart and my mind um, because, you know, in my past, I'd had some negative experiences with, with that. And so Martha and the show and all the postables have really given me that gift of, of, of realization and understanding that, that uh, it doesn't have to fit into a, a, a box. Um, so I am so grateful for that. And, uh, yeah, I mean, and then as an actor too, I mean, Shane is such a complex character um, and Martha has written her so beautifully. Uh, she's she's such a, a an incredible female role model, Shane, um, not just to the viewers, but to me, you know, when I, when I portray her, I'm like, oh, huh, yeah. Shane's a better woman than I am. Um, you know, like I just, you know, I, I and and then what I love the most about Shane is that she's human. She's not perfect. She has her own insecurities and her struggles and um, her fears, and yet she always seems to find a way through that to do the work that needs to be done and, and, and be a positive influence on those around her. And so, um, yeah, I, I could go on and on and on, but <laughs> I think there people are probably getting bored now. <laughs> uh, I can, I can give you a hundred percent certainty that it's definitely not, uh, people will <laughs> continue speaking. And by the way, there is zero chance that I'm getting to uh, to even a tenth of my questions. So you're very welcome to come back again, so we can continue with the 
but um, <laughs> okay. I, I agree wholeheartedly with you on the spirituality aspect because I am a very spiritual person and I do not follow a particular religion. I have a Jewish heritage uh, and I believe in God, I believe in angels, but I have kind of my own way of, uh, of now working with that uh, paradigm. And I I think, you know, like most responsibles, I've cried throughout pretty much every film. But my the biggest release that I had was when Oliver realized that he was uh, talking to an angel. Uh, I completely lost it. And it was it was an incredible experience there for me. So coming in as somebody who, you know, is not a religious uh, uh, person, uh, like as you mentioned, I have nothing but love for how they handled it and for how it worked. And I see zero that I disagreed with or didn't, uh, or, or any anything, you know, arose that I, I wasn't comfortable with. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's, Martha truly has a gift in that way. Yeah. Um, so, I, you know, speaking of crying, and I know that there is a lot of, you know, crying through the uh, read-throughs, but uh, <laughs> have you watched SSD as, as a fan? And then, uh, you know, if so, which, which one uh, of the episodes or which one of the movies was the one that really kind of tugged your heartstrings the most? Oh, boy. Um... I I ha I have watched some of the some of the I haven't watched it in its entirety I have to admit um but uh but I will say that um the, of the ones I have watched and and just you know read and 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 was a part of um to the altar speaks to my own life experience more so than any than any of the others and and that's um the way that it deals with mental illness the issue of mental illness um my i have a history of mental illness in my family um i personally struggle with anxiety and depression um and the way that martha was able to tell that story was just so what's the right word i what impressed me the most or what what impressed upon me the most about that storyline was how she was able to not only tell the mother's story the woman who suffer suffering through the mental illness but also how it affected her daughter and that throughout the majority of the episode or film, these two women, mother and daughter, were seeing things through their own their own eyes, um, their own sort of preconceived ideas about how their choices in life and their decisions and and such had affected the other, and 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 then in the end, you realize that through just love um it didn't it didn't matter you know in the end they loved each other and accepted each other and were willing to work together um to to mend what was broken and and um i think the other thing that that film so beautifully um, depicted was that mental illness is not a um, it's not a choice it's not something that you can just sort of like oh let's you know pull up your bootstraps and um, it is an illness it is a disease uh, of the mind and just because you cannot see like you can see a broken arm or a broken leg um, it does not mean that it is any less challenging or or any less detrimental to to those suffering from it and those uh loved ones of those suffering from it yeah and um the other part and uh, i also connected because <clears throat> uh, there were so many people who wanted to thank you for speaking about mental health for speaking about 
people are dealing with and uh, being open about it because it helps them deal with their own or help relate to, uh, to their own struggle. And what I really appreciated in that movie is that it said that hey, it's the medicine that helped me get to a certain point. And you say that too, you know, taking medicine to help with depression and to help with things is not a wrong thing. It's not a failure. It is just one way that you can help yourself and help live your best life. I think that was also very important because a lot of people don't want to go that route. And, you know, for some, meditation works. For some, uh, watching SSD works. And for some, it's it's medication. And there is no one way that's better than that. Exactly. And I and I think, too, that it's, it's extremely unfortunate there's such a stigma uh, to, to getting the help you need. I, I mean, if you were diabetic and and you were refusing to take insulin, everyone around you would be like, what's wrong with you? Take your medication. <laughs> so it, it, I, I think we have to stop looking at it as some sort of um, putting it in a different category than something like diabetes or or heart disease or anything like that. It is it is an actual um chemical imbalance and it needs to be right and and how and you're right however uh you choose and whichever works for best for you is the is the right thing to do absolutely um switching a little bit to uh to a lighter note um the postable sure. are, are also detectives in their own right so uh <laughs> it, in into the altar the um the engagement ring that oliver gave to shane seems to be different from the uh, ring in 11. Is there anything that you would like to share about that? Now, is this you or is this is this somebody else in the, the postable fan base? It's not me. I take zero credit for it because I actually did not see uh, anything that came out of 11 so far. So I did not uh, know that. This is one of the questions that was asked in the. In the I love this. Um, these you guys are just unreal. Um, all right. So so truth time. Um, I'm big on truth time. Yes. Um, we shot SSD ten to the altar. Oh, hold on a second. My my gate is open and hold on. No worries. Griffin. Oh, okay. I didn't know. Okay, I'm back. Sorry. The gate opened and I thought Griffin escaped, but he's actually in the house now. Um, okay, so back to the ring. Uh, so yes, to, to the altar was shot three years ago. Um, w when that uh, film uh, wrapped up, um, we thought the series was finished. We really, truly did. And a lot of the um, sets were dismantled and, and went away and everything sort of like just sort of went away. Um, and when we came back to shoot 11, um, we, somebody, I think Martha actually asked me about the engagement ring and there was some talk about, well, where is it? Well, we don't have the same one. Um, what, what, like, what should we use, et cetera, et cetera. And, um, and I just said, why don't we just use my own ring? It, my own ring looks vintage. It, uh, is unique, um, like Shane and like Oliver's grandmother. Um, this is, uh, this is my ring here. Beautiful. Um, it's, it, you know, it's, it's always on my finger unless I am forced to take it off. Uh, and, um, and then that way, you know, uh, it also has some sort of, I don't know, other meaning too. Like it's not just some prop. Um, and so Martha loved the idea and, um, I took my wedding bands off and wore them on the other hand and in the collection of these rings for the, for the shooting. And then, and then, um, I may or may not have moved those rings over to, to this hand at some point in filming. Um, so yeah, so the, so mystery solved. <laughs> the ring is is my own my own engagement ring. 
Uh, and um, and you guys don't miss a darn thing. Nope. No. Nope. <laughs> and postables, we love it. Uh, any other things that uh, that you can uh, you know uh, tell during this truth time uh, portion? Uh, anything <laughs> like that that we would want to know about? Um, well, I law I I when we wrapped up uh, to the altar, I also took with me um, as my as a keepsake. Um, I took Shane's necklace. Uh, and in the, when I, at the time was living in Vancouver, uh, and then we moved, my family moved back to Toronto. Uh, and in the move, I, I lost the necklace. I, I didn't know where it went. Um, and so when we came back to shoot, I, I, you know, messaged the wardrobe designer and Val and I said, Val, I, I can't find the necklace. Um, I don't know where it is. And she said, okay, okay. Well, um, I'll, I'll get in touch with the right hand gal, which is the, the design jewelry design company, um, that makes Shane's necklace. And, um, she ordered, she ordered another one, I think. Uh, but it, but, but it, but it looked different. Now here's the thing. I was packing to come to Vancouver to shoot the film and I thought, Oh, you know, maybe, maybe I, um, Maybe it'd be fun to reuse one of the dresses that Shane wore in one of the other movies, which I have a few uh, of my favorites. And I pulled this dress out of a garment bag, and lo and behold, what fell on the floor in front of me was Shane's necklace. So I was able to take that necklace back to Vancouver, and and I wore the original necklace throughout the entire shoot. That's amazing. And again, trust the timing. Things uh, things tend to work out when they need to. Yeah. That's, that is very cool. Yeah. But I'm, I'm surprised that they ordered just one. I, I would have ordered a half. <laughs> yeah. Perfect. Well, listen, um, I, I want to talk to you for another three hours, but I know that that's not okay. I really truly enjoyed speaking with you. I know postables love it. So thank you. Thank you. Thank Oh, thank you, Alan. And um, I know Postables may want a little view of this guy. Um, this Griffin has been uh, in and out of my <laughs> my legs and feet throughout the entire interview, and uh, nearly escaped the backyard. So he's uh, he's saying hi to everybody as well. <laughs> and thank you, Alan. It was a pleasure to to sit and chat with you. Uh, thank you, Postables, for watching. I really appreciate it. I know you love it as much as uh, I do. And uh, I will get this cut up and post it as quickly as humanly possible. Thank you. Thank you, Postables.